Good morning. Welcome to number 29 of Short Term Mental Intel. I'm your host, Killian Gordon, with Hosty. Today we have Paul Zukaskis joining us, the global president of customer success for Guesty. Paul has come from running some of his own vacation rentals into uh, SaaS uh, support over 10 years, I believe, uh, of experience at industry to leading customer success teams. And uh, now here joining us today, uh, Paul, thank you for joining us. Uh, if you could just fill in any gaps maybe that you find important about your career, your journey that you'd like to share with the audience. Yeah. Hey, Killian, thank you very much for, for having me join today. Uh, really excited for this conversation. Um, man, when you put it out there, 10 years of experience, I don't feel that old until you start naming the actual years that I've been in this. Um, I think you summarized it. I think that, um, you know, I was already in SaaS prior to, to kind of hosting my own two to three kind of short-term rentals. I know that's nothing in comparison to a lot of the people that are going to be listening to this. Um, but I just, I fell in love with that process. There's, there's really no more exciting feeling than sitting around having dinner with your wife and then getting like a brink from Airbnb, hitting your phone and knowing that you just filled a gap night or, or something like that, right? Yeah, absolutely. That's, there's such a rush that comes with every single guest that comes on board, as well as all kind of the, the detailed work. And so I really got a sense of it from doing it my, myself, obviously on a much smaller scale. And then I just had this amazing opportunity pop up with Guesty and, and you know, you know, managing the customer success team for Guesty, what I'm really trying to do is just make sure that we're partnering with as many, you know, property management companies as we can, that we're taking our learnings from a hostie or from some of our other clients spread across the United States and even the globe, and, and making sure that we're offering kind of, you know, some, some consultation where we can of Th this is the way this problem is being solved in, you know, on the East Coast. Maybe it can apply, you know, to some 30 plus day, you know, needs in, in Los Angeles. And so really what we're doing as a customer success department is trying to drive value to to the Guesty platform, as well as kind of share our, our own knowledge that we're aggregating across a number of different clients um, and, you know, just trying to provide the best service we can. Well, that's a perfect segue into really what I want to get out to the audience and that, that what is Guesty? Uh, you know, property management software uh, yep. has been used for many, many years in a lot of different areas. Uh, Guesty is becoming kind of a household name in this area. But how do you explain what Guesty is when, when it's so encompassing? Yeah. So I, I think you alluded to it, right? So at, on the very surface, Guesty is a property management software. Um, for short-term rentals and for vacation rentals. And essentially what our, our target is in, our, in the development of our product and you know, uh, the broadening of our service is trying to become an end-to-end -end solution for simplifying kind of all the complex tasks that go into a property manager's day-to-day. -day. So whether that's kind of managing the, the distribution of their listings across multiple different you know, OTAs or online travel agencies, or whether that's handling kind of the guest, the guest messaging. We wanna automate as much of that guest messaging as we possibly can because we realize that if we're automating things through the platform, that that reduces kind of your, your resource count internally. Um, you know, we, we want to make sure that we're collecting payments, that we're enabling your own direct booking websites, that we're allowing you to send quotes, um, managing your calendars, managing your financials, whether it's through accounting or through our marketplace. Um, and then essentially, I just alluded to it, which is the marketplace, making sure that if there is something that Guesty isn't managing in your complex um, operational needs, we want to make sure that we have a very robust marketplace that allows you to go find that solution elsewhere and have a seamless integration into Guesty. Yeah, there's so many different directions. I just wanted to go with that. Uh, but going to Guesty's marketplace quickly, sometimes uh, one of the things we've kicked around is, you know, Guesty is in this unique position with its marketplace. If, if you don't offer the service, you have a marketplace to go find that service. Yep. We we sometimes kick around the idea is Guesty positioned to be the app store of the vacation rental industry, like you know Google has their app store, of course. Mm -hmm. Now that's a, a kind of a broad uh, question, but do you kind of see that a, a marketplace developing that can be somewhat of an app store for the vacation rental market? Yeah, I you know 
our marketplace team would be ecstatic to hear <laughs> that people are, are kind of viewing our marketplace in that way. I know that it's a place where we've really made a, a continuous investment as an organization. Um, and it's been a huge priority for us to make sure that there isn't any limitation to use Guesty as your core PMS platform. And we want to create as much of a democratic environment as possible with our marketplace of allowing you to go across multiple different marketplace partners and determine which one is best for your for your business and for your needs. For instance, dynamic pricing. There's a lot of dynamic pricing providers that are out there. Um, and we want to make sure that we're we're connecting to to almost all of them so that if you do have a preference for one over another, that you're not shying away from the guestie platform as a result of your commitment to your dynamic pricing uh, provider. And so I believe today we've got roughly 90 or so, you know, we're 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 coming up to a hundred marketplace providers within our our platform. And and oftentimes Guesty even has functionality that's that's in our marketplace. And what we want to do, if our task management tool isn't robust enough for your needs, we want to make sure that you feel comfortable, you know, moving to one of our marketplace partners and using, you know, their task management or whatever it may be. And so um, we just it's such a unique, fast growing space, this whole SDR travel tech space, that there's so much creativity being brought in. And we don't want to stymie that creativity by not having it be accessible in Guesty. And so that's why we value the marketplace so much. This might uh, group me into my my generation, but I almost think of it as Legos. I think with the with the speed of innovation uh, in this industry and just technology alone, that sometimes an organization can maybe become slower because it has a very uh, non malleable foundation and it, it can't it, it can't adapt and it becomes a little bit slower and to be able to almost have plug and play, I mean, through API connections, et cetera, your marketplace, almost like Legos, you've got the fundamental platform, but then the individual user. And from my understanding, you guys are making a, a little bit of a push towards your RBO, which you'd categorize as about three, three properties and less. So a host that manages their own property. Is that the direction that uh, you guys have an eye on a, a marketplace that's a segment that's growing? Yeah, and so by RBO you're talking about rental by owner. Yes, yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yes, that is a that's absolutely a segment that's growing, and I'll get to that in a second. I love that analogy, by the way. Oh, yeah, of, yeah. Of, of thank the you. Legos, yes. uh, where you're talking about, because uh, we had a general manager in the Americas that would always say that uh, property management companies are like snowflakes, although they're all operating within the same kind of cohesive space the way that they're structured and the way that they prioritize their operations is so unique from one to the next, yes. right? And so nobody, it's funny because we have all these webinars at Guesty about like designing your tech stack. Exactly. Nobody has the same exact tech stack because they all choose different strengths and weaknesses of the marketplace to build their tech stack. And so um, enabling that and that Legos is perfect because I, I don't know if you had one of these when I was a kid. I had like the large green flat Absolutely. Lego kind of landscape where you would Paul, build like cities on top of I didn't want to use that analogy. That's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> yeah. And so I see Guesty as yes. like this like large exactly. green Lego platform board. Exactly. Um, <laughs> but to get back to the, the other point that you were making, which is the rental by owner, right? Um, I think something that Guesty has seen out of its total available market and something that we're seeing from the data of Airbnb being an IPO is that uh, there is an overwhelming majority of listings on the OTAs that are that are RBO essentially. They're, they're yes. smaller operators that have between one and three listings to your earlier point. Um, and that this market is still it's trying to professionalize. It's trying to see how it could enable, you know, its distribution across multiple OTAs. And there isn't necessarily a leader or a thought leader in that space for some of these smaller operators. And so what Guesty did is that it acquired a company called Your Porter um, based out of Europe. And it recently rebranded it to being Guesty for Host. So now if you join or if you're, if you're a prospect and you're coming to the Guesty website, um, you're going to get to see a lot of our, our creative marketing materials and a lot of our, our case studies and videos and testimonials and things like that. And along that journey, 
you're going to have to determine whether you have uh, three or more listings. If you have less than three listings, you'll go down kind of this guesty for host um, uh, kind of platform where you're going to learn a little bit more about this mobile first platform that has condensed feature sets that really are are more the a starter kit for property managers that only have one to three listings of how do I distribute across the major channels? Yes. How do I how do I manage my calendar and how do I message? And those are predominantly the three kind of pillars on which Guesty for Host is built. And then as your business matures and as you need more financial help and as you need more more task management and things along those lines, we hope that you would explore the Guesty for Pro package and kind of graduate up into what the needs are of people managing five or more listings. That's, I mean, that, that's wonderful because you, what you saw, I, I believe, with some of these OTAs is they able they were able to boil down the complexities of vacation rental management. Like just what you're saying, the hosty for, or excuse me, guesty for host is is a little bit more of a simplified version and entry level version. On on the surface, uh, Guesty could be a little bit overwhelming because of a, a property management company is not just a cleaning company. There's Correct. a lot that goes into it, and so some what these OTAs did is they made it uh, bite sized for the individual person to now run their home as a vacation rental, and I think that's just an incredible way to uh, expose a huge group of people to Guesty and the product, and then. When someone decides, because some people never decide to go over three homes. Some people are comfortable at you know, 10, 15, 20, a portfolio. Um, so that's how, real quickly, if people want to get more information about uh, Guesty for Hosts, where would they go? Yep, uh, just go to the Guesty website. Go to okay. guesty.com and then kind of follow along kind of the path there of identifying how many listings you actually have. And then you'll learn more about Guesty for Host if you fall into that categorization. Or if you have a few more listings in the in the five or 10 range, then you'll you'll kind of go down the, the Guesty for Pros kind of uh, navigation. Would you put that kind of that two tier, that those two packages as uh, one of Guesty's largest competitive advantages? Or you could probably go on a, 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 on a, about a lot of those different features, but do you have any yep. one particular feature you like to boast about? Yeah, I mean, I think when it comes down to to kind of Guesty's competitive advantage, um, personally, I think it's the the client services side. Uh, obviously, you know that's that's being kind of uh, under my my own domain. So once you are kind of in the Guesty for Pros, you do have access to our CSM program, which allows for dedicated account management um, as well as kind of twenty four seven support coverage. So those are huge advantages for us on the services side. Um, when we start looking at, at kind of other teams within Guesty where we notice that we're drastically different from the competition, it would also be a, on our development team. Um, I know that we've got over 150 developers across the globe, and that really allows us to, to kind of um, perfect our craft as far as the channel integrations. It allows us to come to market with more features, to build robust integrations in our marketplace. Um, and so really trying to stay on that cutting edge of innovation uh, where the OTAs are, I feel like Guesty is right there with them. Um, and then as far as features are concerned, I think it's just, as I alluded to, through that development team, our ability to have all of these direct integrations into the primary OTAs, yeah. whether it's it's Airbnb, booking, um, you know, VRBO, Expedia, Agoda, um, you know, and, and, and more obviously there. And so the the hardened channel integrations are, are almost like table stakes for us at this point, but it is a huge differentiator as well as our unified inbox. Um, it's something where Guesty really built its platform around guest communication first and thinking about how do we unify all of those various communications into Guesty and then how do we automate from there? Because we noticed that outside of the cleaning operations teams, if those are in-house for a property management company, the next largest department tends to be the the customer experience or the client communications teams. And so by enabling automation there in AI in our unified inbox, we're able to kind of reduce the resource headcount of our of the PMCs that are using the SD platform. And they're able to focus more on, on growth, right? Because at the end of the day, if if you're hiring more guest communication resources, 
you're probably not hiring more more sales folks or growth minded folks and where where pmcs are going to see the the greatest return on their investment is obviously through their sales team if they're able to acquire more and more listings then they're you know that's just common sense more revenue kind of coming into your organization you can build from there and so that's where we want you to focus on let us handle uh optimizing your operations excellent can you speak a little bit, Paul, about the integrations for channel managers, the, the communication between directly to the OTAs, but also through Rentals United? It's a little bit off script, but just to speak that I think that's, that's difficult. So I am on the business development, the sales side of everything. Yeah. I oversee that department. And could you just speak to that? When you have folks who are moving from just being in the world of VRBO or just Airbnb, mm -hmm. uh, it's it's you don't know what you don't know. So the idea of maybe publishing a listing across many, many different platforms, across many different booking websites is a little bit foreign because some people are just working to manage one calendar or the integration of just two particular OTAs, VRBO and Airbnb. Yeah, um, it's a great question, right? And it's... It's something that as a property management company matures, um, that they have to take into account, what does my distribution look like? And why do I need to be distributed, right? Like uh, we hear this all the time that folks will come to, to Guesty and they'll only be on Airbnb. And they'll say, well, Airbnb, we're getting, you know, 90% occupancy exactly. through Airbnb. So why should I distribute onto a VRBO or even go to a Rentals United, which distributes to a lot of smaller channels? Um, and kind of what we always cite is the fact that, one, you may be getting 90% occupancy from Airbnb, but are you actually maximizing your ADRs, your average daily rates, as a result of being single-threaded onto a channel? Um, because you're, you're likely only distribution equals eyeballs on your listings, right? And so if you're, if you're only on one channel, then you only have so many eyeballs and you could really only charge a certain amount versus if you were able to double or triple the amount of eyeballs on your listing across multiple different channels, then your, your booking windows become larger, right? So you're, you're booking 30, 60, 90 days out, which is common on VRBO. And you're getting higher ADRs because those booking windows are at their at their max, right? So you're not necessarily filling occupancy with low ADR rates. Um, and so essentially, what it does is it it also smooths out your your risk, right? Where if if something were to happen with with an OTA channel like Airbnb, exactly. and they made a decision that somebody falsely claimed that there was a camera in one of the units. Airbnb will take that claim very seriously and they Absolutely. will act and they will, they will look to shut down your listings uh, until the issue is resolved. So now if you're only single threaded in Airbnb, your, your business is at a standstill versus being able to distribute across multiple different channels. When you're to get back to your uh, another point of your question where you're asking about kind of there's the primary OTAs, which I've cited, you know, the Airbnb yes. booking, Expedia, VRBO. And then there's Rentals United, which is a channel, which is a channel manager. And where what Rentals United does is that in addition to the primary kind of OTAs that it has integrations with, it also enables integrations into smaller, more niche type of booking platforms. And Something that Guesty has realized over the course of the last two to three years is that these smaller OTAs really do drive a lot of occupancy and a lot of value to, to the property management companies. Um, and oftentimes, if you're able to capitalize on these smaller channels and actually build your credibility there, it's easier for you to rise within the algorithms of those smaller channels versus the the larger ones, right? So on Airbnb or Booking or Expedia, or whatever, you're going to be competing across, you know, millions of listings. But if you're able to actually drive the right type of reservations through RU into some of the niche channels, your your listings will get more visibility there because you're essentially a larger fish in a smaller pond versus just, you know, um, a typical fish in a typical pond with OTAs. 
Uh, what a great answer. That's such a beautiful, you know, typically that's somewhat what I'm explaining out to, to owners on a daily basis. Mm-hmm. You might look at your calendar and you, you might have that 90%, that 100% occupancy, but maybe you had 100 eyes on listing that month. Maybe you could have, you could double that or triple that. More eyes on listing, larger demographic, overall improvement of performance. Yeah, and yeah. higher higher, higher booking rates. But there yes. is it is a double-edged sword, right? Because yes. Um, I started by saying, you know, do you want to expand to various different OTAs? As an organization, each OTA has its own operational lift. They're not, they're not uniform. They don't all operate and work the same exact way. Exactly. And so although Guesty tries to kind of condense it down into a single source of truth within its own um, kind of property management software, because they're all so unique, as a organization, you need to make the determination of, do we want to take on the over, or the operational overhead of taking on more distribution channels um, for what may seem like nominal gain? So there's, there's always this, this balance of, you should probably be on anywhere from, you know, three to five channels, but if you're on 20 channels, there's a lot of headache that comes with being on 20 different Absolutely. distribution channels and not all of them are going to be performing for you. So Absolutely. do you really want to be on puppystays.com? I just made that up, but you <laughs> know, like, are, are you going to see, you know, the revenue uh, directly correlate to the amount of effort it is to maintain that channel? Absolutely. And in essence, that's you just boiled down why a lot of people don't take that jump to numerous OTAs. You have, sometimes I, maybe it's an oversimplification, but each OTA is almost a billboard on the side of the interstate. And each one of those billboards has a different cost of doing business with them. Maybe they're charging $100 a month in rent. Maybe they're charging $50 a month in rent. So each each OTA has its own terms of services, its own guest rules, its own accounting, and its own, uh, its own platform fees. And so we, we have found that there are some that, you know, they may be a wonderful platform, but maybe the juice isn't worth the squeeze or the type of guest that that OTA is tend to attract might be one that's just not a good fit for the type of experience that, that Hostie is trying to offer. And so, you know, I've actually never, you know, when you look at property management companies, they discuss in terms of, of 20, 50 plus different uh, booking websites that they're going to market or list their home on. Would, were you saying it's just each company needs to make its own decision on if they're going to be on five or 10 or 20, or, or do you feel that there's a sweet spot that's beginning to develop? And that's, I mean, just your, yeah. your thoughts. <clears throat> Obviously each company has to make yeah. the decision um, for themselves and depend, depending on how large your inventory is and how diverse your inventory is, you may choose some channels for some of your portfolio and not for others. Right. So, um, We've seen like alternative accommodations really pick up over the pandemic. Yes. Uh, people want to stay in tree houses and in yurts in the middle of the field somewhere, right? And they're paying top dollar for that kind of quasi luxury alternative experience. And so for those listings, it makes sense to be on a lot of niche channels, which really highlight those alternative accommodations. Um, and so I, I wouldn't say that there is a sweet spot um, what I would say is most common among the larger property managers across the United States and even globally now, what I'm seeing is that they're typically spread across four and they're eyeing a fifth one. Sure. And when they're eyeing the fifth one, it's typically, you know, uh, Marriott's Homes and Villas recently released, you know, and it's gaining a lot of traction we for just, the type of yeah, gas quality. We just joined on board with them. So. Yeah. And, and then, you know, like there's this huge elephant in the room, which is, what is Google doing? Because yes. Google has been, been kind of, you know, sniffing around the space for, for quite some time. And people are now starting to see some performance from Google on their, on their listings. And they're trying to assess what's the level of lift that we should put towards Google if this does kind of take off. And is it worth us? Is it worth it for us to be on the cutting edge of being a handful of listings on Google before everybody else gets there? You know, may I ask, would you view uh, Google's booking platform as more leaning towards a channel manager or would you categorize it 
more into the as a, a true OTA, just out of curiosity? Yeah, I um, it's a great question. It, it, it just really kind of came to me. It, yeah, it's yeah. Just, it it seems like more of an aggregator, like a like yeah. a kayak of, yes. of short term rentals, right? Yeah. Like um, uh, you know, like not a true channel manager because it's not pushing the listings to to all these various different sites, but it is necessarily creating uh, visibility into it. Um, so it, it's a good question, but I don't know how long they'll stay that route. It's I can see them. Have you ever used Google Flights? Um, yes, like, yes, I have. Yeah, so I could see them potentially moving in in that direction, gotcha. in which you know they would they would basically allow you to to search the parameters of your stay and then point to the various different OTAs. Like to your earlier point, you know, like you can get this rate on Airbnb, you can get this on Booking, you can get this on Expedia, type of thing. Gotcha. Well, thanks for sharing your thoughts on that. Yep. Yeah, this so this industry is professionalizing. It's uh, there's the standardizing is professionalizing. Just like you mentioned it, there's some interesting players coming in, like Marriott Homes and Villas or Marriott International. Um, mm-hmm. What do you see in terms of of more your extended stays? So we categorize these as as midterm rentals. So typically above 30 day stays, but below 60 you know below 90 day stays Mm -hmm. and you have this interesting nomad culture traveling uh working from from home but also traveling while you're doing so does guesty have an eye on that that area just share some thoughts on do you see that industry growing do you see it shrinking yeah so if you would have asked me this question two weeks ago. I go back and forth on it every day. (laughs) My answer would have been completely different than where I'm going to go with you today. Okay. Um, And a lot of it actually stems from, from a webinar that I hosted for Guesty recently, where we were talking about uh, maximizing your direct bookings. And one of the panelists uh, that we had joined us was Melanie Brown from Key Data. And as part of her presentation of information, she had two slides specifically on the 30 plus day rental and then tracking trends of what did 30 plus days look like in 2019? What did it look like in 2020? What does it look like in 2021? And what she was saying is that essentially they're seeing a nominal increase in 2021 over what they saw in 2019. So pre pandemic and now a full year, Post-pandemic. you know, within the pandemic, they're seeing very similar trends with like a moderate uptick. I think it was like, like something like a 3% increase from what they had seen in 2019. Now, the reason why I say that my answer is going to be drastically different is because prior to, prior to uh, Melanie kind of opening my eyes into what they're seeing from, from the key data side, from the guestie side of things, and from my conversations with with PM, you know, PMCs across across the globe, is that they had seen a large uptick in in kind of these thirty plus day stays, or at least they were targeting it more because they knew that the operational overhead on a thirty plus day stay is significantly less, and so the benefits were so great to their organizations when they were getting these these type of stays. Um, so. What we saw folks doing is actually changing their marketing plans and their marketing strategies to actually incorporate more of these, to try to attract more of these long-term stays. They're they're going after kind of, uh, you know, Gen Z and millennials who who don't want to be locked down to a lease, who don't want to be locked down, obviously, to a mortgage. Nobody can afford a home anywhere in the States now. But um, so they they're really trying to target to this type of audience and the way that they would do that is that they would essentially cannibalize a room within their their inventory so if it was a a three-bedroom house they would take out one of the beds in one of the rooms and they would make it an office space and they'd add a bunch of plants and nice desks standing desks they'd upgrade their wi-fi to really speak to this audience to say hey Exactly. If you're going to live anywhere for 30 days, don't live in Wichita, come to Aspen or don't live, you know, in Omaha, come to, you know, Los Angeles for, for 30 plus days, days. I think something that's going to continue is this trend of people getting more comfortable with not having a lease and going from, from spot to spot. And I think the areas that are really going to benefit from this are the ones in which short term rentals are outlawed. So as people feel more comfortable moving into urban areas, 
urban areas traditionally were the ones to outlaw kind of the short-term rentals, right? Or yes. limit it. Like you only get a hundred days of short-term rental in Los Angeles or whatever mm -hmm. it may be. So what we've seen is that because, because there's this rise in this digital nomad, um, property owners in Los Angeles, New York, or, you know, insert city name here, San Francisco, don't want to sign long-term leases because they see, you know, uh, a lot of tenants' rights that they, and tenant issues that they have to deal with. Yeah. And so they feel comfortable with the the 20%, 30% increase in NOI that they get from the the occasional 30 plus day rental. And that allows them to not lock into long-term leases. They do, they aren't necessarily at 100% occupancy, but they're seeing the same kind of return on their investment as far as the, the rents that they'll get from hosting somebody 30 plus day stays nine times a year, as opposed to having somebody be in there for a full year. So I think as people get more and more comfortable in this COVID environment, um, if we ever see the end of it, I don't think that the remote working force um, will stop. I think that, you know, from a startup world, it seems like the the remote position is the new ping pong table or keg in the corner. It's, it's basically table stakes if you want to attract talent, and that talent is going to continue to travel for 30 plus days in desirable locations. Well, you just brought so much value to the conversation and just that that response. I, I don't want to dilute what you just said there. We know midterm rentals for hosting have been interesting uh, in areas where they have seasonality. Sometimes you can offset seasonality with it. That uh, lower touch aspect of midterm rentals or, or how, corporate rentals, however you want to refer to them, you know, you can use that to fill your slow season at times where it doesn't make sense to do all those turnovers because the nightly rate potentially in the in the down season, yep. maybe the juice isn't always worth the squeeze. Uh, you know, frankly, we kind of explored it out of necessity in 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 COVID to uh, to to continue generating revenue for our homeowners. Uh, obviously, their mortgages don't stop during during COVID, That's and right. so it. A little, you know, some of the, the best innovations come out of desperation or inspiration, and, and this may have been a little out of desperation during during COVID, but it's cracked open an interesting market. And you, just like you mentioned, you're seeing people Murphy bed. So may, maybe maybe it's an office and a bedroom, <clears throat> and depending on your, your guest booking. So very interesting market segment to, to keep an eye on, and, and that was such a, such a wonderful insight on that. We're, yeah. we're getting a little bit close to wrapping up here, but uh, Paul, would you mind sharing just some of your thoughts on the future, maybe what, some things you've been thinking about for 2022 or exciting things that guesties had uh, their eyes on for, for 2022 if we haven't already covered some of them? Yeah, so we talked about Guesty for Host. That's, um, that's an offering that we are... Um, you know, really excited to kind of release and kind of try to capture some of those early stage property management companies. Um, along those lines, you know, we're, we're constantly releasing new new distribution channels. So Expedia is rolling live for us as a direct integration. Um, so being able to take folks directly to Expedia yes, from, from our platform, I think will be very impactful for our existing PMCs. Um, as far as like new kind of exciting product lines, I know that um, guesting moved towards uh, an advanced analytics offering in in twenty in t late twenty twenty and throughout twenty twenty one, and that was enabling a lot of kind of dashboarding and a lot of visibility into your business. We're going to f further kind of build on that with some geo benchmarking data, which is something that a lot of people have been asking for. And so this kind of premium analytics offering, where you can kind of benchmark your own kind of data and insights against what the market in your in your county, in your zip code, in your state, in your, you know, geo region, whatever, right? So you'll be able to kind of see how you're performing there. And so I think a lot of people will get value out of benchmarking information. Yeah. Uh, we're also releasing our own internal damage uh, protection program. So one of the things that we've we've noticed from some of the, the smaller kind of property managers is that um, there is this need to to protect yourself against any kind of cat cataclysmic, catastrophic, I think that's what I was going for, catastrophic claims. So, um, you know, f 
So being able to, for a very nominal fee, something like 40 bucks per reservation, have your unit covered up to $3,000 is very impactful. And so we're, we're releasing kind of that, that uh, liability or you know damage protection program and then um, lastly I know probably late in the year guess is going to be working towards its own kind of payment processing so being Wonderful. able to to kind of collect payments within the platform distribute those payments to your owners all kind of one-stop shop within within Guesty. Um and then continuing to build on our accounting module. So that's another area that we've really invested a lot into and just exploring more and more use cases and more and more business models that'll be applicable to to the accounting module that we're providing currently in Guesty. It's wonderful. That's very exciting. And that's extremely encompassing uh, almost every aspect of the short-term rental market. Paul, thank you for joining us, and everyone listening in, thank you for joining us again. Paul Zakaskis, vice, excuse me, global vice president of customer success at Guesty. Go check them out. We'll leave some information in the description and the links for everyone to uh, go ahead and, and see what uh, the future holds for Guesty. Paul, thank you for joining us. Have a wonderful afternoon. Yeah, thank you very much, Colleen. It was super fun.